I have Dr. John Townsend with me, and I had tried to talk to him about a week or so ago, and we were having a problem with the Skype uh, today. It should be working. Dr. Townsend is a Christian self-help author and a psychologist. He's the best-selling author of the book uh, Boundaries. Dr. John Townsend, thank you so much for coming back on. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jesse Lee. How are things going for you? Things are going well. Uh, what is a uh, Christian uh, self-help author and psychologist? What is all that about? What the, This is written by the PR people, and what they're really trying to communicate is that my mission and my, I guess, my skill is in helping people have a more optimized life, a better life. If, right. your, life is a, if your life is a 4 out of 10, let's make an 8 out of 10. If it's an 8 out of 10, let's make it a 10 out of 10 in two areas. One's in your personal life and one's in your professional life. Right. Oh, okay. The last time I talked to you before the Skype went bad on us, we were talking about boundaries, and uh, you were explaining what you mean about boundaries. Right. A boundary basically is a property. Um, house or your yard, there's a line that says, this is mine and this is, belongs to my neighbors. The outside is my neighbors, the outside is mine. Everything in my property line belongs to me. And in human beings, that means my money, my time, my talent, my, my emotions, my values. And I'm supposed to take care of those things. I'm supposed to grow myself up. I'm supposed to be a person who's productive and healthy and responsible. But anytime I go to my neighbor and I start taking care of my neighbor's money or time or health or, or emotions, and I say, that's my problem. My neighbor's money problem is my problem. My neighbor's time problem is my problem. I've crossed boundaries. Anytime I let my, bound my neighbor come into my yard and take care of those things, that's when things get complicated. Because then all of a sudden, you can't do things that you need to do because you're busy taking care of everybody else. Right. Amazing. Um, I've noticed, Dr. John, that most people today are immoral. How did that happen, and how do they, how should they, how, what, what do they need to do to overcome that? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that we just live in a fallen world all the way from the beginning. The world's not what it used to be. All the way back from Adam and Eve, it's been a, a world of broken people. But then there's other reasons as well. There's also the fact that the family is not what it used to be. The family used to be a place to learn morality, to learn that there's good and evil, to learn that there's behavior that's good and behavior that's not. So to reverse it, we've got to help the families be healthy so that mom and dad are teaching the kids this is right and this is wrong instead of, well, anything goes. Yeah, because when I was growing up, uh, and most people know that listen to me know I, go, I grew up on a plantation down in Alabama under the Jim Crow laws, and when I was growing up, people were not as immoral as they are today. Even with, with, you know, when I was growing up, we were taught to love all people, to treat people the way we would like to be treated. There, this argument between blacks and white was not happening, and parents were together for the most part. It was an embarrassment to get pregnant out of wedlock. Abortions were unheard of. Homosexuality was a shame and, and was not promoted. All that is out in the open now, and the, and I've noticed that the Z generation and the millennials have, you know, they're real talented. One half is talented, but the other half is immoral, and as a result, they're suffering for that. Uh, and so what I hear you saying that if they had good parents, that would not have happened, right? It would have been less happened. It still happens, but it would have been less of it because children need stability. Now— uh, we now we have the, the Z generation, the millennial generation. I'm like you are, Jesse Lee. I love them. I have a lot of friends that are that way, and I love the fact they're creative and they really want to make the world a better place. No. But a lot of times they need help with, hey, there's right and wrong, yes. there's moral and immoral, and and where to draw the line. They don't they don't get training on how to draw the line. So if they're open to it, we need to help them. Yeah. Do you treat people for depression? Sure, absolutely. Depression, anxiety, uh, drug problems, the whole thing. How about Christians? Do you treat Christians for that? Absolutely. Christians get depressed. But how is it possible for—are they just Christian in namesake but not really born again? No, totally born again. I'm talking about senior pastors, elders, missionaries, 
people that love the Lord, they get depressed. How is it that if they are truly born again of God, that they are able to get depressed? Because in God, there's nothing but love. He's love. He's perfect love. And in perfect love, there is no fear, no doubt, no envy, no jealousy, no strife, no depression, no judgment of yourself and others. How are they able to get depressed? I don't understand that. Well, it's because we got two sides of our brain, Jesse Lee. Like, I, I study the brain. I study a lot of neuroscience and how it ties in with the Bible. Well, the left side of our brain is the truth, logical, rational part that goes, God's in control. Everything's fine. I have no reason to be depressed. But we have another side of our brain called the right brain that's very emotional, very passionate, very creative. And that part feels differently. I'll give an example. There are lots of people in the Bible that you and I agree were people that love the Lord that were depressed. David. One of the reasons we look at the Psalms, and he says in Psalm 74, God, where are you? I don't even know where you are. I'm, I can't find you. The, you know, the, the Saul's coming after me, and I'm the king. David had a lot of emotional struggle. Paul in 2 Corinthians 7, he says that when I was, you know, when I was distressed, and the Greek word there for distressed also means depressed, Jesse Lee. He says, when God, called, God comforts the distressed, he sent Titus to comfort me. Ezekiel ran, what, 40, 50, 60 miles? and then went to a cave because he was so depressed. So even people of faith, that right side gets active. We get tired, we get discouraged, we get blown out, even though the left side says, no, it's the truth. The right side says, no, I'm hurting. But what I've noticed is that it's not the brain that guides us, it's the spirit. We're guided by the spirit of God, and in God there is no depression. And the brain is just a tool for the body. It makes the body function. You know what I'm saying? You use it as a tool to build a house. You use it as a tool to learn how to do whatever you're going to do. But we as human beings are a spirit, and we're mm-hmm. guided by the spirit. So the two-sided brain doesn't have anything to do with the spirit. Well, it's kind of hard to use your spirit when you can't think, though, because God always uses what he gives us along with himself. I'll give you a good example in the Bible. Jesus is talking uh, as he's entering the Mount of Olives, and he stops and he says, he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I wish I could have put you under my wings like a hen does her chicks, but you would not. And you can see the sadness of Jesus. He was sad because he wanted to give people life and love, and they said no to him, and they sort of walked away from him. So even God has, a, has emotions that are negative. Well, he was just sad because they couldn't see. But my thing is— um since we are a spirit created in the image of God, and the only reason we have the brain is to make for the body function. It's like a mm-hmm. car motor or something, right? Mm-hmm. And and when you are born again of God, you are now living in his nature. You have his nature, and his nature is not any of that of Satan. It would seem to me that the people who are getting depressed— have, they still have the nature of Satan and not of God. They have not been born again. Now, I agree with heaven where Paul talks about his own struggle. You know, Paul, you, uh, you and I would agree, was a born-again Christian, one of the greatest of all time. And Paul says in Romans 7, he says, the good things that I want to do, I can't do. Right. The bad things I want to stop doing, I can't, I can't stop doing. That's Who because we are spirited of ourselves. We can do this. in Romans 8, he says, there is freedom in Christ. There's no condemnation. So even Paul struggled with the fact that we make bad decisions, and it was very hard for him. But, so the Bible's full of people who are—they're full of the Spirit, but they're not, they're not all done yet. They're, it's like—here it is. I think the way I look at it, Jesse Lee, is we're all in the oven of growth. You know, God has us in the oven of growth. We hope by the time we get grown, we'll, we'll be mature. But until we're out of that oven, we're always going to be a kind of a, a, a people who still sin and make mistakes and are, are broken. That's just because the oven's not done yet. But Paul was just saying that he realized that of himself he could do nothing because every time he tried to prevent doing the things that he should not be doing, he did them anyway. He soon realized it wasn't him, but it was the Spirit that made a home in him. So he allowed God to— cause him to overcome that spirit so God's spirit can work through him and cause him to do the right thing. Um, it, it just, why even bother becoming a, a, a Christian, believing in God, if God going to treat you the same way Satan treats you? 
How do you understand that God would do that? I, I don't see God. Because depression is, the depression is from Satan and not of God. And the reason people want to overcome Satan, because they're looking for a better life on earth, right? But yeah. why believe in a God that's going to treat you the same way to God you already serve, which is Satan? Yeah, I'm not sure he does that, Jesse. Here, here's, a, here's a good analogy that will help me sort of think through this with you. If you touch a hot stove, you're going to go, ouch, because the stove is really hot and you burn your fingers. Well, a lot of times that's what depression is. It's when we've had people mistreat us, when we've had people reject us, hurt us. Sometimes it goes, ouch. Now, I don't know a lot of people that can say, yeah, everybody treats me like crap and they beat me up and I was abandoned as a child, but it always felt good because I've got God. They say, yeah, it hurt because I've got feelings. I put my hand on the stove, it hurts. And so they say, but, but God helps me, he restores me, he makes me better. But I've never seen in science or in the Bible that putting my hand on the stove and saying, oh, that felt good works. But I want to move on because of time, but once you're born again, you're no longer of the darkness of Satan, you're of the light of God. And right. so in the light of God, you cannot sin. So you would never put your hand on a stove anymore because you can no longer sin. There's no reason to go out. And so when the people are mean to you, you love them, you speak up, you deal with it, like the president is doing, for example, the great white hope. He deal with it, but he doesn't hate them because in God there is no hate. But yet you stand up, you speak up, you tell the truth. Uh, but if you're still sinning as a Christian, then you have no power to overcome evil. Okay, so you're saying that you don't sin. Right. Yeah, you and I just look at the Bible a tad differently, Jesse Lee. You still sin? Are you a Christian? Oh, yeah, you are a Christian. Do you sin? I do. You, Every day. You get depressed? There have been times in my life I've been depressed, and I got a lot of help. And so do you, you don't get depressed anymore? No, that doesn't mean I won't be. I'm not depressed right now. You're not depressed right now? Um, his thing went out again. I might be depressed in 10 years for some reason. And how are you going to help people to overcome depression if you get depressed? Because I know what the Bible says about depression, how to heal that. But there's nothing in the Bible about depression. It doesn't talk about depression yeah, or look, depression. Actually, that's not, actually, that's not true, Jesse Lee. Um, if you look in the Greek, in the New Testament, the words that I talked about, like in 2 Corinthians 7, where it says, that God who comforts the distressed, another word for that is depressed. If you, take, if, you, if you look at that, there's different definitions because depression is just an unending sense of loss and sadness, and it's in the Bible. Does the Bible say that you could be a son or daughter of God and be depressed? Yeah. It, if, we, if, we, if we go back to the fact that Paul was a son of God, and I believe that he was saved, and I think that you believe he was saved, and it says that he said, when I got depressed, God sent Titus, my disciple, to comfort me. Because comfort is a lot of times the healing for depression. How do, you kind of how do you respond to the verse in the Bible that says, no one who is born of God sins? That's in 1 John. Somewhere in 1 John 4. Right. How do you respond to that? Is the Bible lying Lord. about that? No, I don't. The, the Bible is always true. But then you well, the think Bible, that you think that you can sin then, if, but in the Bible it says that no one born of God sins. Well, they mean in that sense of the word in First John, sin repetitively without taking any responsibility for it, like a habit that you won't look at. There are people that call themselves Christians who sin a lot in really bad ways, and they go, "I don't even care." Well, you would have to question whether they're a Christian or not. But, but it doesn't say, qualify. The Bible doesn't put all the doesn't qualify it like that. It just said no one born of God sins. It doesn't put any qualifications in there like that. It doesn't qualify. Well, actually, actually, if we look into the, the original language, you see the qualifiers. Amazing. And so have you sinned today? Yeah, I sinned today. What did you do? I got up in the morning. And I wanted to talk to my buddy, Jesse Lee. And then <laughs> and I was looking forward to that. And I, and I forgot to tell God, good morning, I love you. And I think I thought more about myself than I thought about God. That's that amazing. Amazing. So let me ask, um, 
you counsel, what's your impression of Donald Trump, the great white hope? I think he's doing a, uh, he's like any other president I've seen. He's doing a lot of good things and he's doing a lot of things that he's not, since he's not perfect, he's still also making mistakes. Like what, for example? Well, actually, I don't go on um, video and public forums talking about the politics because of the role that I play okay. in All right. the self help world. No, I understand that. Um, you counsel married couples as well? Well, mainly I work with leaders of organizations now. What I mainly do is I work with corporate leaders. I work with people that own large businesses. I work with senior pastors in, in churches, and I, I help them to be as healthy as they can be. It's mainly the, the companies, the corporations, the teams that I work with now. Oh, okay. When, but you have counseled married couples before in the past? I have. Why are women so dishonest in marriage? marriages? I don't see they're any more dishonest than we are, really. Than who? Than men. I don't think men, women are any more dishonest than, than men are. Women are just as dishonest. Men make a horrible mistake by telling women their weakness, right? But women never tell the truth about what they do, the wrongdoing. I kind of don't use the words never very much about men or women. I use sometimes. Right. I don't use never. But have you noticed, that's used the word most of the time, have you noticed that in marriages, most of the time, women won't admit what they are doing wrong? I haven't noticed that at all. I probably counseled 500 marriages, and I haven't noticed that, no. And so you've heard women say, I'm the one that ran my husband off. I'm the one that turned my children away from their father. My kids are angry because of me and not their father. You hear them admit that? Yeah, I hear them admit it. Whatever percentage humans do it, in my experience, they don't do it any less than men do. Really? And should men tell women, including their wives, their, their problems? Their own problems? Yes. Absolutely. I think it's a great idea. For a man to tell a woman his problems? Yeah. Why is that a great idea? What can she do about it? She's the weaker one. I really don't see it that way. I think that women have lots of strengths. Why would you think that? Women don't have strength. Oh, the men are weak. Yeah, I kind of don't see it that way. Do you I believe don't. in the order of God? Tell me more about it. God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, woman over children. The, the, the man over woman is a matter of debate for me. I don't really see it that way, honestly. So, so you don't like that part in the Bible? Well, I think there's different interpretations of that part, Jesse Lee, honestly. So you don't like that order of God in the Bible? You don't agree with that order of God in the Bible? It depends on what you mean by that. Can, let me give an example. Okay. I've talked to a lot of couples about this. And, um, and, a, and, a, and a man will say, well, my wife isn't doing what she should be. And I'll say, okay, let's hear it. Let's talk about it. And I'll find out he's trying to influence her to be his slave and to not have choices and to not have her feelings. And I'll tell her, I'll say, he is telling you to do something that God never told you to do. You cannot, you cannot be under this kind of a guy when he's telling you to do things that are hurtful and sinful because God never intended her to be hurt by him. Uh, and I work with a lot of men who are very controlling people, and they don't want their life to have their their wife to have choices. They don't want their their wife to have their own feelings and thoughts. And I'll tell them that's not how God built it. So, but I'm is it? More, I'm worried more about the controlling men, honestly, Jesse Lee. But women are more controlling than men because they're so insecure. Yeah, I haven't seen that at all. You um, are I mean, may, may, maybe you and I are just spending time with different couples. <laughs> You, know, <laughs> you got a certain population you're helping, and maybe I've got a different population. I just don't see that. You um, uh, should a man, when a man tell a woman his problem, he's dumping a load on her that is not in her nature to handle because she looks up to the man, as man looked to God, and so a woman cannot handle her own problems. So there's no way she can handle. The man problem, the man. And do you agree that he should help her overcome emotions because emotion is of hell? There's no love in emotions. Emotions are of hell? Yeah. There's no love in it. It's all hate. Well, what do you do about God's feelings? God doesn't have feelings. 
when he says, Israel, you have wounded me. Right, but he doesn't have feelings. He says, he says, you have, he says, Israel, Judah, you have, you have grieved me, and grief is a, a feeling? Seems like no, God it, it's seeing that someone is wrong or can't see, and you want them to see, but it wasn't the, the human fallen state feelings that, and I noticed that people in the fallen state have not returned to God. They compare their emotions to God. They think God feel what they feel, not realizing their feelings are coming from their father, the devil. Well, let, let's start all over again with the feelings part, because when I read my Bible, I read that God gets angry, he feels compassion, he feels grief. So help me understand why God doesn't feel feelings when the Bible says he does feel feelings? Well, the Bible doesn't say that. God I, God is not a feeling. That's why he wants you to overcome that. The Bible says that, well, God says that you should see but not hate. Anyone who has anger is a feeling and anger is of their father, the devil. That's why you must be born again. And you see a lot of men who are just like women because they become like their mothers. They resent their mothers. So you become like what you hate. So they have the mindset and emotions of a woman, but that has nothing to do with God. And that's why God said there will come a day when I'll return you to your fathers and the fathers to the children. All right, my last question for Dr. John Townsend. I really appreciate it. Dr. Townsend, last question. Is the Bible the word of God? Yes. So it's not the word from God. It's the word of God. I'd say it's both. And the word of God and it's the word from God. Why that do you say sense. it both? Both. Because it's of God, meaning it was originated by God, right? It was something's of, it's originated, and it's from God because it comes from his mouth to our ears. How do you know what has been said or what you read in the Bible is true and is of God? Well, there's two ways that we've—this is a 2,000-year-old 2000, 2000 question, Jesse Lee. One is that we found that, that history and archaeology back it up because there's a lot of facts and we're finding out about the Bible's truth. The second one is because, um, really, it ties together with itself. It makes sense. The Bible makes sense. So you don't believe that the Bible is the word from God, but the word of God is, is written in our hearts? I think it's both, really. Amazing. Doctor, how can people um, get in touch with you? What's your, how can you get your book and all that good stuff? Uh, drtownsend.com, Jesse Lee, dr like doctor, drtownsend.com, everything's there. I've got an institute. People can take courses. They can get a degree in counseling, a degree in leadership. Uh, they can get books. They can get videos. we got it all there. Dr. John Townsend, thank you so much for coming on, man. That was fun. Thank you, Jesse Lee. You all take right. care. All right. Have a good one. 888-7753. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe. And share the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. And it's a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it. 